Okay, this is the January 22nd uh, meeting of the Board of Selectmen, and we're having a joint meeting in a little while with the Finance Committee to look, look over the, uh, the budget. This meeting is being taped by the Frontier Community Access Television uh, for viewing by residents later on and by the public. Okay, first item on the agenda is minutes for um, the last meeting of the Board of Selectmen on January 16th. Has everybody looked at the minutes? And there was one thing that was left out. It was one of the meetings that uh, Bob Armstrong had gone to, and that turned out to have been a uh, meeting of the Conway Energy Committee concerning right. electricity aggregation. I think that was actually in the minutes. But anyway, or maybe I, had, I looked at the copy you sent me. But. You see, it's in this copy. Okay, good. It's in that copy. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. So this must be a revised version. Okay, yeah. good. Okay. So everybody has looked at the minutes? Yeah. Any changes or amendments? They're good. Okay. okay, I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes for um, January 16th. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next item on the agenda is warrants. We have three warrants. We have a vendor warrant for $142,248 a payroll warrant for $105,040, and a payroll <coughs> deduction warrant of $27,806. Do I have a, a motion to accept those warrants? Second motion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Meetings attended by select uh, board, what? Uh, second. Yeah, second, uh, second by Bob. Uh, yeah. Thank you, sorry. Yeah, missed that. Um, Okay, uh, meetings attended by select board members. Well, I usually go first, so I'll go, go first ahead. again. And so anyway, I went to an <coughs> FCAT annual meeting that was this week, which was good. And, and uh, against my better judgment, I'm president of FCAT again. So uh, okay. I, I, I worked hard to try to get uh, Tom to, from Sunderland to do it. And once again, he said next year. So. I'm, I'm happy that you we'll, are present. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Yes. So, well, he knows a lot more about video than me, but anyway, somebody's got to do it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you and I went to uh, the MMA annual meeting Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, uh, um, a, a good... I'm now starting to recognize lots of people there, which is, which is great when I go, you know, and I... And, uh, but they also had some great breakout sessions. I went to a number of breakout sessions about climate change and about uh, renewable energy and, and clean, and, uh, and, and it was good. It was always interesting to hear all the problems that other towns have trying to motivate their town to do difficult things. Mm -hmm. but, and they were great, and they had good speakers. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you, Bob. Robert? I went the other night to the Grammar School uh, preliminary budget hearing, over, actually the opening of the budget hearing for the grammar school. Uh, I was there myself and three of the finance committee members were there. Oh, good. Was a good representation. Good. Yeah. Um, had a real good discussion about everything. We talked a lot about attendances and things like that. Um, they're going to go up, I think, oh, you got to copy their budget, Tom, they're going to mail it to you. I don't have that. Uh, they made it to almost 4%, 3 point something percent of increase for a little over $60,000 increase they want this next year. But that's strictly, at this point, just a proposed amount that the superintendent and the principal are asking for. The uh, school committee has yet to tear it, take it apart and uh, come up with recommendations for that. So they, they had not seen it at the same time we did, so they haven't had a chance to comment on it. So, well. mm -hmm. It was a very good meeting. We discussed a lot of problems with the buildings. Um, discussed the uh, uh, water <coughs> leaks that we had in the building, freezing problems, mm. stuff like that. So it was really very good, well attended, and very good meeting. And okay. did, I'm did, glad I went. Did they set a date for the next meeting? Uh, they know that they got a meeting come up with us. Uh, they knew that date. The Tom had sent them already. I guess hadn't yet, huh? I, I don't know what that is off here. Uh, I don't know. We had posted here somewhere a couple of minutes, a couple of meetings ago. But I didn't hear when they were when they they're going to get back to their committee. 
the school board is going to get back to it. And then, they, then they know they got to come and meet, discuss it with us. So. Mm -hmm. Great. They're working on it. Great. Thank you, Bob. Okay, as Bob mentioned, I also attended the um, Massachusetts Municipal Association Conference and Trade Show um, in Boston, uh, and I was there from Thursday through Sunday morning. Uh, unfortunately, I had to miss the, the annual meeting of FCAT on Thursday night. Um, but I'm sure Bob Bob is now present again, which is good. <laughs> you know, this is good. And um, yeah, I thought the conference was was really really well done this year. And um, as you mentioned, it's it's really good when when you get to recognize a lot of people that you've seen over yeah. the years, yeah. and you get to talk to them and see what's happening in in their municipalities and the problems they're having, which are basically the same as everybody else is having. So, uh, yeah, it's always good to talk to other selectmen um, and town administrators to get their opinions, and town councilors too. Um, okay. Some of us seriously missed Elizabeth Warren and Ed Markey, who were stuck in Washington and weren't able to make it. Well, I'm sure you seriously missed her. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, I'm sure. That's okay. <laughs> Sounds to me like a 50-50 split here. <laughs> uh, no, it was probably much more in John's favor <laughs> to, to have pulled the room. I, I, I thought during um, uh, E.J. Dion's speech, I heard a call from the back of the room when he mentioned something about Massachusetts Republicans. Did I, did, was I correct that I hear did I hear a scream from someone that I know from <laughs> oh, I don't know. back yeah. of the room? It wasn't me. Oh, it wasn't? You I sure? was right behind you. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Well, anyway. But on the left, I believe you were on the right. <laughs> oh, I was on the right side, and, and I someone was, over on, was the left on the side. left yes, side. Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay. But anyway. So that was, uh, yeah, that was very well attended and a uh, very good conference this year. Some really good uh, workshops. So, and if the dinners were okay. I know you didn't you didn't attend the dinners. I attended both of the dinners. They were a Beatles cover band. Uh, you know. <laughs> that turned into a wild party. I, I bet it did. You know, because <laughs> the first thing they said was, "We're going to play. You can sing along, <laughs> and there's room up here to dance." And before you knew it, the place was like going crazy. So it was it That's was fun. Good. It was fun. Uh, a good way to end, you know, the, the educational part of that right. the whole situation right. with a little bit of, you know, social interaction. Okay, next item on the agenda, citizens' concerns. We don't have any citizens here, so I guess we don't have any citizens' concerns. Old business. All right, we have the annual town meeting warrant, review and discussion of the draft. Uh, <clears throat> I don't have too much to report. Um, I made the changes discussed at the last meeting, okay. and I have a uh, revised figure from the assessors for the conversion, the software conversion costs, okay. um, higher than than they were hoping for, but uh, it will cover them. Okay. Um, and I corrected the order to reflect, um, as usual, the money articles in descending order. Why were the higher come? I'm sorry? Why was it higher than they planned on? You'll have an opportunity on February 5th oh, okay. to ask them. Uh, it's, um, they had a preliminary figure, didn't they? Yeah, they, they were hoping it was going to be 5000 over two years, but they're asking for $6,500 for next year alone. Mm -hmm. Now, they may not end up having to spend all of that. Some of that would be for our staff time for that project. Uh, so it's not just the cost of the conversion, it's actually doing what needs to be done on, on this end uh, with it. We're getting technical help for the conversion itself um, with some of that money, but uh, we also will need to be spending more time, uh, I think, than they originally thought with that. Okay. Uh, this is the second of two years, so it has to be, it has to be wrapped up this year, and I think they're they're giving themselves um, uh, everything that they might need. All right, so we'll get more, more details from uh, Lee yeah. on, on uh, 
at a later date. Yeah, and she uh, comes February in. 5th. Okay, February 5th. Yeah. Um, and uh, I will note that there has been some sentiment to put the school items up front for the sake of the superintendent and principal. Um, in the past, this has been thought to encourage people leaving mm -hmm. after the school votes have been taken, mm -hmm. and um, the board in the past has declined to change the order for that reason. Of course, then it ends up that if someone in town meeting moves it, and uh, if the town agrees, then it, the articles do get moved up. But uh, all right, we we can we can discuss that. Yeah. So that that will be at your at your initiative to discuss that as we go on. The warrant. When does the warrant close? Um, so March 30th? Mid, 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 no, mid-March. Mid 22nd, March. isn't it? 22nd of March? Something makes me think that. I think it's this, maybe the second week in March. Yeah, second week in March. It's, it's... All right, so we're talking six, seven weeks from now. It's okay, 60 20, days 20 before time. town meeting. Right. So. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, so that's really all I have in that. So you just have the, the latest version. It hasn't changed much. Right. Uh, I got one player, Tom. Yeah. Article 18, $200 for a flag fund. Is, is, yeah. How much is in that fund, anyway? Uh, right now, $100. Is that enough? If they had to buy it? Because well, if I remember, the flags are quite expensive when they go to buy it. Um, we also put in $200 into um, flags under the Veterans Services budget. And so far, that's covered. They, uh, it's about $200 a year is what it comes out to. So. If we put in two hundred dollars a year, that's good. Uh, if just we flags need more, for cemeteries. Is that for ones for the sidewalks too? Uh, no, no. This is this is just for. Uh, th this one is just for the uh, gravestone. Well, what's what's for the sidewalk? That's a fun too. Um, I don't know fund. that we've been. I don't know how those have been funded in the past. Actually, well, I know the Firemen's Relief Association. Uh, before our two hundred fiftieth. This past uh, June, uh, donated five hundred dollars to that flag fund so he could buy new flags because he didn't have enough money to replace the old tattered huh. flags. Okay, that, I thought there was a town fund for that. That doesn't sound at all. That really almost doesn't sound like enough. They, the the good ones cost about fifty dollars each. Mm -hmm. um, so well, they, they bought ten flags. flags. So maybe that was enough. I don't know. I thought we had fund for town for that. Well, we do have a flag fund. Right now there's $100 in it, and all that I knew was that we needed more for the, uh, for the gravestone flags. If we need more, I'm happy to put it in. I, I don't know even where those larger flags are kept. Brian Blakesley has them all. Oh, uh, okay. He's the one that's been doing it. You might, may want to talk to him. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's, let's get in touch with him and find out. I hate that that hasn't run short of yeah. Nice to see an American flag flying. Absolutely. Okay, any other comments on the, uh, the draft as Tom has uh, amended it and edited it? We're going we're gonna to have, you know, three or four different times to, to, uh, All right. to get, get this in anyway. Yeah, I'll leave it as a standing item sure. for discussion in case something comes up. Uh, we may or may not have anything particular in any particular view. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Tom, on this? No. no. Any other comments? No. 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 Our next item on the agenda, uh, cancel the state emergency for the tornado. Well, here we are almost a year yeah, after, and um, uh, we, kept it, we kept it in place to make sure that we, we were covering all our expenses for that. And now we're pretty sure that we have all of those things settled. We just paid our last bill to Panter Mill, the uh, tree cleanup service that mm -hmm. came in. Uh, they did a bit on the back of the property, uh, and that has been approved. Um, they had done the front of the property earlier, and as far as I know, that's the last of the town nice expenses right to be paid. He did nice work. Okay, so we're, we're clear of the bills on that? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll, I'll make a motion that we um, lift the state of emergency for the tornado of um, February 25th, 2017. 
since all of our obligations have been covered and there's no more need for um, to be for an emergency to be in place. Do I have a second? Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. New business. Uh, priorities for direct local technical assistance from the FERCOM. Everybody have a chance to review this? Yeah, but I didn't make any decisions. Yeah. <laughs> you? All right, let's, let's look at this one at a time. Okay, housing choice initiative planning and or designation. I don't think we have any real need no. to work for that one. No. Okay, so that's not, not in, our, in our list of priorities. Next one is downtown or village center economic development projects. Um, the only thing we have on tap for downtown is the is the wastewater mm -hmm. situation, um, the, the new community um, um, septic system. Somehow, I don't think that fits into into this category. So that's not one of our priorities. Uh, next one is the local multi hazard mitigation plan update matching funds. Now we have we have a. a um, a hazard mitigation plan for the South River. Um, that is something that we're still working on with um, with Kimberly McPhee, right, Tom? Uh, the 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 phase that was associated with the funding, the uh, DEP three nineteen grant, <coughs> is finished. Uh, but there is a long term study of the South River going on, and we did just get uh, a. Uh, Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Grant right. to work on, to work further on that. So I think what we have for that is going to be covered through um, the planning efforts under that grant. So this, it doesn't fit into this? Okay. All right, next item is uh, zoning bylaws and or town ordinance development. Okay. Let's see, affordable work affordable workforce housing, I don't think we need that. Clean energy, uh, that may be the energy committee that, that can work on that, right? So that might be something that we look at. And I, I will note, this was sent to the planning board as well, and the planning board checked off um, help with zoning by <coughs> excuse me, zoning bylaw development for recreational marijuana retail and or cultivation. Okay. Okay. All right. <coughs> land con conservation that protects natural resources and promotes smart growth. I don't think we need that. Larger scale development, we don't have any of that. Low impact development, we don't have any of that. Mixed use districts, don't have any of that. New development standards for tree retention. You have nothing there. Okay, we have nothing there. Uh, the next one, as you said, planning uh, looked at recreational marijuana retail and, and or cultivation. All right, that's that's obviously yeah. important yeah. for what's going on. Short-term residential res uh, rentals, um, I don't think that affects us that, that badly. We don't have any terrific Airbnbs here, do we? No. There are we, probably a few. I mean, they're not affecting us. We, we do have some, and the city of Boston just came out with um, a new licensing procedure for them. So mm -hmm. it's something we should keep track of. I don't know if it's anything that we need to develop in the short term. Yeah. I think our planning board would be uh, more concerned. I think the Board of Health is a little bit more concerned about it. Than the so we want to keep board. this on that list then? Probably should then, huh? Yeah. Yeah, we'll yeah, put that in. Well, we, we, can, we can always, you know, say that they that it would be good to prioritize right. it and we may or may not do anything with it. Okay, open space residential development uh, slash natural resource protection zone. Uh, I think we have that covered in, in our bylaws now, in our zoning ordinance. Right. Uh, I don't know that we have a, it, it would otherwise be called a cluster zoning. I, I don't think we have it, but I don't think we need it because we don't have the subdivision control bylaw sure. as part yeah. of our, we haven't, we've never accepted that. Now you have, e even, uh, you have right to cluster zoning um, you have it by right, even though you don't have a subdivision, correct? I think that depends on how your bylaws are written. I think ours are silent on that at this okay. point. All right. uh, it, would, it would probably be a... Uh, well, 
There's nothing prohibiting it. That's right. Yeah. Put it that way. Yeah. We I know we had discussed something like that years ago when we were talking about back lots. And the yeah. fact that if you you know you have a four acre back lot, but if you have a situation where your your land topography isn't you could do like if you had twelve acres of back lots, you had three you could do three Some one acre lots and the rest of it could be common. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly it. Yeah. Okay. Do we have all right, under other other, do we have anything else that we want to put under zoning bylaws or town ordinance development? I haven't heard any cry for more zoning. Yeah, I haven't either. Okay. All right, the next item is open space and recreation plan update. Um, didn't we do an update recently? Um, yes. Yeah, yes. So. Uh, we'll need one probably starting the following year. I, I'll, I'll, check with, uh, I'll check with Kimberly on that. Okay. Uh, next one is the Deerfield River Economic Impact Study. Um, okay, since we don't have, let's see, we have we have one uh, we have one hydro power plant along the Deerfield River that affects us. Uh, I think we probably need to to include that somehow. Mm -hmm. Floodplain and river corridor management. Well, we certainly have something like that going on with the South River, right? Yes, okay. yes, that, that fits in. Uh, again, that might be covered by the MVP grant, but I'll just say yes, just to drive it home. Okay. The river corridor management especially, that's looking at, at uh, the historic, not just where the river is now, but its historic boundaries so that uh, development can be discouraged within it where it is right. likely to, 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 to meander right. again at right. some point. Right, okay. So for us, this would be the South River more than yes. the Deerfield. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, we're on, we're on the next, we're on the next well, one. I, I know, yeah. well, yeah. but it just says river. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay, the next one is regional planning technical assistance for large scale utility projects. All right, we don't have anything like that. So, community food assessments. Examine a town's food system. Is that something that we need to do? I don't think so. I think um, the uh, the Agriculture Commission might be looking at the local use of local agriculture, but I think that's a, a separate thing from what this is driving at. Right, okay. Next item is creative placemaking. All right, I read that. I, I don't think that that, that applies to pop us. Pop-up park. Pop-up pop pop park. park. Okay. Hey, they have uh, pop-up Irish pubs now. Huh. Inflatable. You can you can rent an inflatable <laughs> Irish pub. Really? Yeah. yeah. I might be interested in that. You just Google that sometimes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Inflatable okay. Irish okay. pub. Yeah. Um, next one is wellhead protection plans to protect public drinking water supplies. Well, we have no public drinking water, <laughs> so that um, doesn't really apply. Hey. Next, next one is agricultural commissions. Uh, certainly that would apply to us. We have one, but it's it's working. I don't okay. think we, we need to prioritize that as something that we want DLTA money for. Okay. Next one, implement storm water management measures. Uh, I don't think we need that either, do we? All right, brownfields redevelopment support. We don't have any brownfields. No. no. Industrial park master plan update. We don't have any industrial parks, so that that's out. Um, recreational marijuana assistance. Okay, this one, yeah, this is all we need. Yeah. And we want public education and outreach. We want zoning, and we want development of local health board regulations. Yeah, we want all three of those. Yeah, that last one's going to be key. Yeah. Uh, any other planning projects you think we should include? Yeah, I think they've covered most of them that, that would apply to us. Uh, unless we want to put down wastewater planning or community septic under this. Uh, I think we're beyond the planning stage for that. Right. Okay. Right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, next item, regional projects. Uh, please prioritize top three to five. Okay. 
local official continuing education workshops. All right, I think that's very important. I think the FERCOG does a really nice job at that, so that's, that's one of ours. Uh, next one, develop Massachusetts Rural Policy Commission recommendations. Uh, I've, been to, <clears throat> I've been to a couple of the Rural Policy Commission meetings. <coughs> um, on the one hand, they need all the help they can get. I, <laughs> on the I, other hand, it might not be worth spending money on it. I, I, yeah, I, I'm, you know, I don't want to huh? say anything. Um, I just, I just won't comment. Yeah, that's on, why I commented. For okay, you. Okay, well, thank you, Tom, because <laughs> you're here. Well, yeah. oh, wow. so this doesn't sound like the small town cop caucus. I mean, it's no, it's no, it's weird. not. Right. Most of it had to do with um, with developing rural housing choice initiatives. Uh, at least that's that's what what I've heard. Uh, okay. Next one: new collective purchasing ideas. Um, well, okay, energy efficiency improvements to municipal buildings. That's already covered under the green communities. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't know whether we need to do that. The other ones that have been kicking around have been uh, shared IT services and shared human resources services. And um, we don't need the shared IT services. Uh, we, have, uh, we have an excellent consultant working with us now. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, I don't know if if, if 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 we end up not having three to five on here, we might we might look at a, a human resource specialist who we could use as a consultant. But it it's a I think you might have heard some of that discussion. The the, the FERCOG was thinking of going ahead with a human resources um, collective idea. But now they're starting to move away from. Oh, okay, it. okay, okay. So that's because fine. because of the um, the idea of trying to figure out how you dole out those services mm. and how you account for those services and yeah. So they're, they're, right now it's it's kind of fading from consideration. Mm. Not that it won't come back, but right now it's it's fading. All right, next one, Regional Opioid Task Force. Um, certainly, uh, certainly that's a, a, a regional problem, and um, I don't know how big a priority that is with us uh, here, here in town. It's here. Uh, but, you know, certainly that, that should be somewhere in our in our, um, in our sites, right? Yeah. And certainly Regional Public Health, which we, we are... Uh, engaged with the yes. first hog, uh, we certainly need that. Uh, abandoned Properties Task Force Phase Two. Um, we don't we don't have any real problems with abandoned properties at this point that we we're not handling on our own. Yeah, what they mean by abandoned is properties that also that are not only. Uh, uh, run down, but that are not keeping up with their property taxes. And the problem in Conway is that the, the few places we have that are run down are keeping up with their property taxes. Okay. <clears throat> so you can't do much about those. No. Okay. Uh, next one, networking, collaboration, and training opportunities for emergency management directors. Uh, I think that's important. Um, maybe we can have Murph, you know, collaborate with uh, uh, some of the surrounding communities and get some more input. And uh, yeah, I wonder how much of this has to do with maintaining the regional emergency uh, planning group that that uh, that exists. Um, I Tra could, you mean the uh, Tracy Rogers group? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll I'll uh, I'll check with her and I'll check with Murph on that. And okay. Get back to you next week. All right. Support local substance abuse prevention plan for young people. Uh, again, that that goes along with the, uh, the opioid uh, task force situation, and they, they're they're related, so that's that's important. Okay. Uh, explore feasibility or continue work to establish new shared services. Okay. 
Is there anything on that list that we want to share with anyone? We have we have uh, informal agreements uh, with our highway department with uh, local towns if we need to borrow a piece of equipment. That's that's always been done. Well, that's mutual aid agreements with all the departments. Informal. Yeah. Um, you know, we have mutual aid. So we, we've got we've got all the ones we need basically covered here, don't we? Yep. Yeah. Fire services, obviously, there's a lot of mutual aid. Yep. Involved there. You know, it, it's conceivable that, say, if Frontier had a human resources coordinator and we wanted to share with the other Frontier towns, we might be able to do that. I say that only because I'm, I'm always just keenly aware of how much there is to know in that field and how um, limited my own experience is in that. Yeah, that, that's becoming a very specialized and a very knowledge-intensive um, physician. Very, very, very legalistic. Uh, getting more legalistic every day. Yeah, I went to, that was one of the workshops I went to. Okay. So I, 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 if we have room for it, I'd like to include that one. Okay, so you want to do uh, human resources management? Yeah, and, that, and again, this wouldn't be at the COG level. This would okay. be at, you know, local. Um, okay. So do you, 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 do you want to include it in this? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, again, if we have room, we get three to five, and that would actually be six, so we might not. But um, I have a question about one of the other ones, too, so. All right, well, we can, I'll, I'll, when we finish this list, we'll prioritize. Um, all right, next is succession planning. Um, you know, although I'm sure uh, Robert's going to work to 100, I think that... that. Ken might uh, be. Yeah. I think that's a good thing. Retiring. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think that. Yeah, I think it's. Because uh, it, it just it affects every department. It affects the assessors. It affects uh, Jenny Nolan. She retired. Everybody when they get the age. Yeah. It's something good to look at. Okay. Cultural Council regional application process. Um, do we really need to do anything with that? I don't think we do. I don't yeah, think we need to prioritize it. Yeah. Uh, other regional projects? As well. Any ideas for other regional projects? Okay, so how many do we have here? Carol is pushing the mosquito one, but we're already looking at that. Yeah, yeah. We have potentials. Potentially seven. Um, I, I had some further thoughts on the regional public health. We're already working uh, with the health district for nursing. Okay. And we don't need to work with them for health inspection services because we do have our own people in town. So I don't. So think for we purposes need of this survey, we'll take that off. All right. So so what do we have? Six. We have six. Yeah. Which, which is the lowest priority item? Probably succession. Is succession planning in there? Um. It, it could be. Uh, I think the, um, shared services. For the, for the, I, I need to find out what this means, the networking collaboration and training opportunities for, for emergency management directors, because there are all kinds of training opportunities out there already. All right, you want to take, so, take, take that off? Well, I need, to, yeah, I, I could, but I'll, I'll, I'll check what it's about. We don't need to completely wrap this up tonight. But we don't. Oh, okay. But, right. um, but I will... Uh, I will check. Yeah, if you wanted to bring us back a, a list next week of yeah. six or seven of them. Yeah. With some of the questions answered. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, community compact projects. Okay, we're, we're dealing with financial management and information technology. Uh, we're done. Uh, the uh, There are two... I, we're, we're done with our best practices right now. We're working on two others at the moment. Um, one, I will have something to say in my update about it, uh, but they're not part of the best practices in the community compact. They're part of the other parts of the of that program. There are a couple of other parts. Okay. Uh, so I'll I'll give an update on that. But um, so we're we are working with the community compact, but not right now on best practices. Okay. We haven't signed up for anything, so we don't need their help. In it. I'll okay. put it that way. All right. So we're we're pretty much. Do you have the ideas for yeah. this? Yeah. And we'll go over it next time to finalize it? Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. 
next item is uh, let's see um, draft comments of the town administrator on the draft marijuana regulations. Okay. So uh, February sixth, ten to one p.m. The Cannabis Control Commission is coming to the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. And uh, it's the six from 10 to one? Yeah, uh, for public comment, uh, to receive public comment. Right, right. And a couple of the things um, that I noted, the, the biggest one, uh, which, which the, I, I've also taken to the Board of Health, and I, I know that they will approve of, of what, I'm, what I'm saying, is that the Board of Health ought to be explicitly named as the local body which enforces compliance with the state sanitary code. The law requires compliance with the state sanitary code, but it doesn't require, uh, it, it doesn't give the Board of Health a role in enforcing that compliance. They should be the main team. So I, I, it would be nice if, if the regulations specifically mentioned the Board of Health. Mm -hmm. in, in one of the early briefings we got on this, somebody mentioned that the Board of Health would not be allowed to do those inspections. Has um, something changed, or well, there is a provision of the law which says that um, all the normal functionings of a municipality remain intact, uh, regardless of anything that's in this law, and that includes board of health inspection of places that deal with things that meet the sanitary code that have to meet the sanitary code. I just, I'm just trying to close the gap where it's not right. specifically mentioned. But I thought the, like, the issue was whether these things are considered food. Well, um, they, regardless of that, they, their production has to comply with the state sanitary code, and the Board of Health is the agency responsible for enforcing okay. that. Um, so, that's that. Uh, and the other part of it was that there is a, a mandate that they come in and, and do a community outreach hearing, but there is no mandate that it complies with the open meeting law. And I just wanted to say that it would be nice if they were required to give 48 hours advance notice of when that is. They have to publish a notice in the paper a week in advance, mm -hmm. uh, but there's no local notice that's required that I could see in the regulation. So I just want to make them make that meeting have to comply with what everybody else expects meetings like this to comply with, okay. which is a 48-hour advance notice. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so these comments will be uh, will be given to uh, FERCOT on the sixth for the sixth. Yes. Now, the way I had developed it, um, these were going to be my own comments, mm -hmm. but I would also encourage the board um, to have your own comment, which could be the, just the same comment, or it could say we support, you know, Tom Hutchison's comments, or, uh, you know, anything else that you want, and I'm happy to um, work with somebody or put something on the agenda for next time. If the Board of Selectmen itself wanted to submit a comment on your own. Would I, your comments have more weight if we voted to support them? Uh, yes, well, we could mutually support each other's comments. Hmm. That's what I think we should do. Yeah, yeah so if, if, and again, I can work with somebody to come up with those comments. Um, if you need the regs, I can send those out to you again. There may be things that you think of that I didn't. Um, this is kind of bare bones. Mm -hmm. It's fairly simple, uh, but targeted to a couple of things that, that drew my attention. You might think of some other things. Can we, uh, at the next board meeting, uh, come up with, with our own comments okay. and yep. suggest them to Tom if we have any additional. And then I and then I can work with John to finalize those into a comment and either he or I can deliver them. Yep. Um, if you send it so you might. Uh, I, I will I will be there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you, Tom. Okay. We are ready. We are ready for this. Close to on time. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Please. Pot or pothole? Pot or pothole? Talking about potholes. How are you, Alan? Good. 
Potholes are much more exciting than pie. Roy, good evening. From pot to potholes. Potholes run in pot. Fixing the case. Potholes cost you money. Yeah. Are you waiting for any other members? Um, I haven't heard from Bob Stone. Oh, uh, Tom, Tom, Tom Brown Tom was there. He's um, smalling our presenter right now. Hey, uh, <laughs> I was talking to Green Patriots or something. <laughs> Okay, we're having a joint meeting with the Finance Committee, and the object of the meeting is to, um, to go over the Highway uh, Department budget. Uh, Ron, why don't you start and make your comments first? All right, well, the only changes that I've made uh, requesting is, and first one's an increase to my hourly wages, what I would like to do is take the labor that we hired in April and change that position to the same as the other ones. Um, to, to find somebody that is as qualified as the guy that we hired, Jake Burrington, and seeing what all the other towns are having trouble filling these positions. Um, it's just, I don't want to lose this guy. I know it's, it's $4,000, I mean $10,000 more a year from what he's making now. He's working out very well? He is working out excellent. He's okay. got all his licenses, he's... Um, he understands what needs to be done. And he's conscientious of the, the equipment, trucks, and I just would really hate to see this person go down, go find another job like if Buckland or um, Shelburne or somebody starts looking for somebody and lose them because it's okay. getting difficult to find good help. Okay, so it's, it's your recommendation that we uh in order to keep him, we need to, to improve his, uh, his compensation. I, I honestly think that, you know, he's not going to stick around. He's the same rate the other guys are? Except for him. Yes. And then the other thing was there was another um, $2 an hour added to my assistant in that increase. Okay, so that's, that's, that's not only... Um, for uh, Purrington, but it's for your assistant. That's what that ten thousand comes. Yes. Okay. For the secretary also. Yes. For Michelle. Um, she's works out. She's doing an awesome job. Again, I'm real I've, happy with what's very conscientious. I've heard, heard nothing but good comments about Michelle. I, mean, I would love if I could go uh, make her full time, but <laughs> just I mean it, it would be. It's such a huge benefit to have somebody that's capable of dealing with a lot of things that I'm not able to. Absolutely. Okay. And then as that's on payroll, then there's just an increase of from 102,000 to 105,000 on my materials just to try to keep up with inflation a little bit. 
Is that is that basically your sand and gravel, or your or your that's salt? No, that's all our materials for the summertime. Uh, gravel, okay. catch basins, and all that. Okay. Um, anything that we use in the summertime. Okay. And then there was two thousand dollar increase that I felt we needed to start addressing my fuel usage, because um, the price of fuel is going up. Price of fuel is going up. Yeah. Three pairs. What's that? Three pairs. You like that? One it down. It catches your eye. It does. Yeah. yeah. Um, because of the issue with the grader that we had last year, we I asked for any for the $35,000 uh -huh. to do the transmission last year. Um, I've had, the grader is fixed. Um, I've got $9,000 right now into it, it's usable. I do have to do some more work to the blade in it. I don't know what that's gonna be, but I don't feel that, I mean, I think we can go back to where we were with our repair <coughs> budget. That's regular. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well that's good news. Well, the expended has gone down every year. It's 15, 16, 17. It was really high in 15. Were there a lot of, were there a lot of extraordinary items in, in that uh, have been addressed over the last several years, Ron? Well, what are you talking about? Uh, where's it going? 15, 15, 16, 17, expended. The repairs. The repairs. Yeah. Oh, the repairs. Just the repairs. That yeah, that, that was the year that we... Um, that's the year that we bought the two new loaders and okay. uh, money that was oh. bought, used to pay for um, <coughs> that. So was I just put it out of, out yeah. of that yeah. sub account. So those so numbers are bookkeeping numbers. Going down. Now that's 75, 53. Are, really. You're saying you purchased new equipment and 50, hit the they spent account? 90. 60. They spent so 75, yes. right? Um, How can we use those? That's my question to you. In fiscal year okay. 16 and 17, you went over budget, and it looks to me like it's all under the new equipment account. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Isn't that a budget item that we did try to stay within line up of uh, new equipment purchasing? Those are the two items, according to this thing, that you went over most of them. Well, when... Some of it is because when you get near the end of your budget and you you need things and you don't necessarily, I, I guess, um, well, let me put it this way. When I first took over, I was told that these are just rough mm -hmm. numbers mm -hmm. and the bottom line is the only thing that yeah. matters. Right. So when I do things, I try to keep the numbers the accounts accurate. But you went over on both years. But like materials in 2015 was budgeted at 110. I understand what you're saying because you look at the bottom line more than you do. Everybody right. looks at that because you just, any department, you, you just don't want to go over your bottom line if not possible. Mm -hmm. But for two fiscal years in a row, you are over on both years. I think that's something you need to look at closer, maybe in the future, and uh, yeah. when you get down near the end of the year. Yeah. I'm just concerned we have we have years of equipment after the wild card always is something really big can happen that we're not yeah. budgeted and we can goes out of line. You know, this, this number to me it's it's a crapshoot. Which is the repair number? Oh, repair. You oh, can't you, yeah. can't you can't budget for you know, repair. It's almost no, like no. you can pick a number and say it yeah. could be it could be double or it could be yeah. yeah. 30% less, something yes. like that. Absolutely. But if you took historical averages, you might want to budget more than 50,000. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, except you're based on historical averages on the bookkeeping numbers, not on actual repairs. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's a bit of an outlier with fiscal year 15 because there were, new, there were capital expenditure in there from newer equipment, so. The reason it got put into the repair budget was because that money that we spent out of my budget was going to be, it was money that was going to be spent to repair one of the loaders. Okay. And when I discussed it with the select board, um, they didn't tell me to take it out of that budget, but they don't tell me where to take my money. I just did it because that's where, in the whole scope of things, that money was going to get spent out of there one way or, you know, whether we bought the loader or not. 
Right. And that's how we came up with the ex the money to purchase the two loaders. Okay. All right. I did it for 20 years like that. You know, you, you try to hold, you, you sometimes you go over and it can be on any one of them. Yeah, sure, of course. But then sometimes you may have other items that you didn't quite use all of it. Yeah. But at the ultimate end of the fiscal year, you're trying to keep the bottom line from going over. So, I mean, you can shovel things around to, to prevent that. But you don't take and purchase stuff and then you end up going over ten or fifteen, twenty thousand dollars. Right, yeah, but it, yeah, you, but had, you had four tire accounts, I remember. Four but tire, yeah. yeah. Instead oh. of hitting the repairs oh. account, though, we could have hit the new equipment account, and we'd have better, more accurate data to budget going forward. Yeah, it would be helpful. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Say that again. So he bought new equipment and he hit, it, mm -hmm. just for example, in 2015, yeah. he hit repairs instead of new equipment because he's saying he was just spreading mm -hmm. it out, just, and mm -hmm. the bottom line's the only thing that matters. And if the bottom line's the only thing that matters, then you should put your expenses where they actually belong so mm -hmm. that we have better record That, that would have been the only thing that didn't actually go, the because of where, how was this money made up at the end of the fiscal year? We're not. I haven't gone over. My budget hasn't, I've never gone over on my budget. Was the money that's over Winter Roads or something? It, it looks like in FY16, there's a, there's a couple hundred dollars that's over, and I'm not sure if that's uh, just my error in transcribing. If you look under total regular and labor, mm -hmm. there's, which is the, mm -hmm. the bottom line, mm -hmm. It, um, I, I don't know why there's a couple hundred dollars there or, or what we did. I okay. mean, that, that could have been a, a could have been end of the year transfer or something. A couple hundred like dollars doesn't make any difference. Well, I figure 16 is uh, $7,000 to the good in the you know, labor accounts. Yeah. If I read this right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sure. And certainly the, the request this year is 20,000 uh, 20, 20, less than last year's budget. Almost 22,000 left over in the account. The previous year at that, how come it's 20,000 less? Didn't we have a situation in, in 2017 where we didn't have a fourth person for a while? So, the, so, so that's, was, that's the reason for that. Mm -hmm. Well, so what you're saying is, if you had, I don't know how to calculate it, but if we add those two columns up, the, the subtotal for laborers and the total for the they regular, budget, up, we're still within. They are added up down yeah, there. Yeah, they're right there. Right here at the yeah. bottom, yeah. Okay. So Ronnie, the, basically the 30,000 difference on, you know, at the bottom is 260 and 230, mm -hmm. you know, requested. Basically that difference is the 35 that you didn't have to put on the radar. Yeah. 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 Already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I have a and, question. And certainly, you know, through the last three years, Ron has stayed within his budget. Yeah. In so, 2015, what was the new equipment? The two loaders. The two loaders there? Mm -hmm. So I have a question on the... Uh, for materials, did you do like a, so you have an inventory of projects that you estimate for materials that you would need for the coming year? Is that, is that how you? Yeah, a lot of it is, um, most all the material, or <coughs> the greatest portion of that is gravel uh -huh. that we've been trying to <coughs> get put on the roads. Uh -huh. And um, I probably do somewhere around $65,000 in uh -huh. gravel alone. Uh -huh. And then you get all your other like um, hot patch, mm -hmm. um, catch basins, all your culverts, um, mm -hmm. all your materials that you use for um, your general work during the summer. I went to a, a finance training back this fall. And, you know, bigger towns have the ability to do what they call a pavement condition index, and they can actually get some more Chapter 90 money if they do. I don't know if we do that. A lot of bigger towns have professional government that offer that ability. I mean, is there anything that uh, I've been to a lot of seminars and I've never heard that one. How mm -hmm. uh, you get more Chapter 90 money? Yeah. With, uh, How? A pavement condition index, and that's what towns do. They index all the roads when they last been resurfaced, and they keep them on a schedule so they're able to go formally that into the request for the state from the Chapter 90 money. 
the guy who presented was from North Bar with a population of 15,000 people. And uh, he I has this world into the, um, I mean, they have professional government. The that deck is stacked against us because mm -hmm. we're practically volunteers. I mean, you know, right. Whatever. Yeah, I've never heard of that either. I mean, I've gone. I'd, I'd love to get some more information. All right, I will. I'll send, yeah. I'll send it to you, Tom. Yeah, thanks. You know, this guy is from Northboro. He's considered to be a, a model for a town administrator. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Other questions for? Uh, so, how can we um, do the winter separately? Because that budget is can be overspent without. Um, that is one of them special budgets. Uh -huh. Um, it's so the it only one. It's the only one. We're all going back in town because it's unpredictable. It's, sure, it's, well, but it's all unpredictable. Yes. Yeah. 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 This is this is probably the the, the, the toughest budget yeah. of any budget sure. in town. Yeah. Is this budget. Yeah. And I I really want to commend Ron for being within his budget uh, for for three years running and, and I'm sure in 2018. Yeah. Because you know some of the meetings that I go to on on the state level, I talk to other selectmen. The, the biggest bug, bugaboo is is their DPU budget. budget. Yeah, it's just you know, their DPW budget, 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 you know, yeah. the school and and just trying to keep that under control. So uh, yeah. get, you know, commendations to you on that run. Yeah, thank you. And this includes the tornado. I mean, you get, get uh, that's true. That there are some yeah, costs absolutely. in this. Yeah, absolutely. There's extra work yeah. to uh, repair the roads and clean things up after that storm. That's yeah, great. All right. I just want to make sure, I want to hear from you guys, that there's no, uh, that there's never pressure to skimp on winter roads. Oh, not at all. No. Not at all. Um, no, that, that's, that's, Ron's, that's Ron's call, and we have never said anything to Ron about, no. you know, taking that budget down, because right. it's, but it's unpredictable. Looking, but he's looking at that number, I mean, is it sufficient? Is the number sufficient? Are, is, are the roads... Are we doing everything we can to make the roads as safe as we can within some reasonable limit? For example, you know, yes, we might be able to make them safe, five percent safer by doubling the amount we spend, and that obviously is unless you're an unlucky. Although, although Ron, Ron does the budget, he puts numbers into this, you know, budget situation. We can go over that budget if we have to. We're not, we're not held to that budget. Well, and that's that's the reason you know uh, winter why winter roads is totally separate. Yeah. Because you can overspend yeah. Yeah. what you budget. Legally, you can go back and ask yeah. for money. And yeah. again, and again, as you say, you know, public safety and, and welfare is is paramount. Yeah. Sure. And just, we we wouldn't we would we would never say to Ron, hey, skimp on that. Question. Absolutely not. Okay. Okay. So actually, if you your committee you has asked you to level fund that. What's that wrong? Your committee has asked me to level fund the winter roads because of that fact of being able to over expend it. Okay. And, and so that it keeps the main, the whole budget in okay. a and place for you guys to work from. Right. But in terms of overspending it, I mean, nobody wants to see it overspent, but if you see a storm coming, you're never going to say, we're not doing the storm. <laughs> we don't That's never, never out. You know, essentially, if, if we were to overspend the budget, we would take it out of next year's free yeah. cash and, and pay that. Mm -hmm. So, right. it, yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's never a situation where we would say to Ron, mm -hmm. don't go over a certain amount. Mm -hmm. Because, again, public safety and welfare is, yeah. is, is paramount. So in 2015, you did go over. So where, where did that money come from? It comes out of free cash. Out of free cash? Yes, so the, the following year. The, the no, following year. Not the tax rate. <coughs> but I see. It may be the tax rate. You can't it actually take it out of the tax rate. rate. That's, that's what I mean. Legally, you're allowed to. But it comes out of the next year's budget. The next year's yeah. budget. Yeah. yeah. I mean, completely. Yeah. 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 Yep. It's the only one of the yes, only I budget items you can actually go with. No, the the bad tax rate. Yeah. And then the way underspent the next two years. Is there, under like new equipment, do you have any kind of um, plan for new equipment that is needed that we don't have, or is, I just, it looks like it's been level funded every year, but, and. That new equipment is just small equipment. Okay. Um, it's not, 
trucks. It's not the capital. There, there are capital items that we, we right. do There's separately okay. aside it's, from this operating budget. So what's the cutoff point? I think that's probably in terms of dollar amount. Is there, is there like a, is it five thousand dollars or less? We're we're, we're discussing that okay. now. Whether right. it's going to be five or ten. Okay. With uh, with capital improvements planning. Okay. Can you give an example of a small piece of new equipment? Yeah. Um, I bought a zero turn lawnmower. Okay. I bought a um, stump grinder for the skid steer. No attachments, that yeah. kind of thing yeah. is what I put under um, new equipment. Thank you. Would a snow plow? That would come out of the winter new equipment, yes. Oh, winter new equipment, mm -hmm. okay. Um, Sanders, that kind of thing, we've done that before. Can you just, just uh, for the record, just uh, talk a little bit about the utility of the zero turn mower? It's we bought that for, we have the field around the salt shed, that was the original intent was because it was a regular mower, it was taking us about six hours and with the zero turn, we got it down to an hour and a half of time spent to mow that. We've been trying to mow it at least once a month. Do they have copies? The other thing is I've been working on maybe taking on more of the mowings, like the cemeteries or something like that, to try to save money from being spent out of, you know, outside. Um, that's I think that would make, personally, I think that would make the hiring department look kind of special, I think, if you, if you could think about doing something like that. Like, you, know, you hear these undertakings on the street, and when, when it was advertised, they bought a zero turn in Lombard. There's yeah. a few people in town that are quite upset. If uh, Sean could do something like that to... Oh, that's the intent. Mm -hmm. it, it would appease the taxpayers, but I think. Mm -hmm. Some of them. It may never appease some of them, but I mean, mm -hmm. some of them. Andrea, just to answer your question a little better, on, on the warrant that we're looking at, okay, Article so 7, we'll to you. 9, and 10, which you'll get a copy of this, okay. um, uh, because we went over a couple things on it tonight. Uh, Article 7, 9, and 10 are capital items for the highway department. So you'll be able to see how that's worked out. Okay. Well, when I say the <coughs> capital improvements committee will be looking at that storm. They, 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 will, they, will they will make their recommendations right. on that, on all of those items. Yeah. They'll make those, um, I think, the uh, second Monday in February. Um, I think that's that's when they're reporting uh, to the select board on their recommendations. Mm -hmm. And I will get you the warrant so you can start going through it and making your own recommendations. Then um, uh, we close the warrant in uh, the second week in March, 60 days before the town meeting. And then we have another month to fight things out if we need to. but. But the scope of things that we're fighting amongst is limited at that point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're thinking of doing something like that, Ron, you might want to consider that for start this next fiscal year. And the only reason I say that is simply because I've seen advertised the company that does our own has been doing our own. Yeah. And the it's company's out advertised for sale at all. The guy's getting out of the business. Mm -hmm. He's got the whole company oh. up for sale. Mm -hmm. Who, who's it? Bear Bear Bear. Bear. Well, we're we're due to uh, we're due for another contract anyway. So yeah, I know. Right. So I'm I'm working on that because mm -hmm. that needs to be done before the fiscal year starts. I mean, that needs to start in April. Would that yeah. impact your labor well, well, the numbers? No, it would be done by done in house by the. But the same staff. Right. Probably uh, mowing is is separate line items and like cemeteries are separate and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's special accounts for them, money can tell them. So. Well, I have a question about, Ron, regarding the, uh, our dear grader. <laughs> so did the green garage up in Charlotte, look at, look over the machine, are there any other red flags or things that need to be uh, serviced or can we go another year without looking at a new scraper? Um, yeah, no, I haven't asked, I right. took that off the table. I am gonna, there is some work that needs to be done to it, the blade need some work done to it and I have the money still from this year's budget 
for the greater. So that's mm -hmm. where that's going to come from. Mm -hmm. I have no, I haven't been able to get a price yet on what okay. we're looking at to do that, but that needs to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. And we we'll just go until uh, it seemed like that's what everybody wanted was to try to get another three or four years, five years out mm -hmm. of it without asking for more money. Can, can you, because uh, since we have some new people on the finance committee, can you just briefly describe your plan for a five-year replacement of equipment? Right. We've been working, we actually have, the only piece of equipment that hasn't been purchased since 2013 is the grader. Okay. Now, this year you'll see that one of the items is um, the Volvo excavator. I've asked to replace that. It's five years for that. Um, just, so just the general principle. Trying to keep up so that we're not spending a lot of money, having to come up with a lot of money when we replace them. They should have a fair amount of value in them, yeah. way more than if we run them for the 10 or 15 sure. years that their life is. Yeah. So we're just trying to keep them up, and it also will help on my repairs. You know, if yeah. we're not having to do major repairs on these yeah. things, then yeah. in the long run it's going to be a huge... We can actually almost, once we get going with it, yeah. have a pretty good idea what yeah. we're going to be spending over the time. Yeah. And that's where what I'm looking at. I'd like to do it with the trucks, but there's no... The trucks, the trucks are too special. Right. They cost too much money for what they are, right. for what they do, and the resale value is, you, you can't really do it. So. It seems like you've been, your strategy's been different on the trucks than on the equipment. Yes. By the used trucks, it seems it. Mm -hmm. Well, because we can handle taking care of the trucks. There's more people The repairs are more manageable. Have been. Mm -hmm. um, but we're also getting to a point now where we're going to start bringing forward they got the new trucks somewhat straightened out, and that's been the biggest problem. Is there's been towns that have bought brand new trucks in in a year's time, used it for two months because th that's all they got for use out of it because they had so many problems with them. Because of the new the emission laws from it started in 2007, and it just kept getting worse and worse. They finally started going the other way now, and they finally got them where the trucks are actually able to yeah, use them. Pass emissions. Mm -hmm. So that is in my plan to start, you know, upgrading the trucks. I mean, because we can't keep going. This was just a temporary thing to keep us up and going. Yeah. When did, when did your plan take in a blow run? I think next year we have a plan to replace the truck for fiscal 19. Uh, that would be your old, uh, your, actually, your newest truck's truck, 14 years old now? It's an old four. the newest truck. Yeah. So your goal would be to skip and <coughs> use trucks in that period where... Well, we've got to start bringing... They're so expensive, you might, if you're lucky, you can do one a year. I mean, yeah. It's a damn yeah. 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 But um, that... You know, we got to start, keep moving. I mean, we got to keep moving forward here. It's just that things were, I wasn't comfortable with what was out there for new. And I didn't feel it was in the best interest of the town. We did have one, an 07 truck that was giving me unbelievable amount of problems. Mm -hmm. And so we went backwards. And we, it's actually been an awesome truck. Um, we've had very little trouble with it. And the one from West Hampton? Yes. They took really good care of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. The truck's been really good. So, yeah. What's the cost of a new highway truck now? Probably over $200,000. Mm -hmm. Just to make it on municipal. Yeah. And if you're driving 14 year old trucks now, if you buy a new truck next year, would you expect to get that kind of life out of it? Or would you take more of the Equipment approach of get rid of it so it still has value. I've kind of what I came up with, judging from what other places do, like um, I know Vermont has kind of been one of my go-to 
how they do things in 12 years is what they're doing for drugs. 12 years? Um, and they're also the where they do the five-year equipment um, and had real good. Yeah. And what's your percentage of recapture selling a 12-year-old truck? What's that? Are you recapturing any value after 12 years? Probably not. Scrap. It's just that you're, I mean, you, maybe 20 or 30 thousand years. I pay somebody to take What's that? Yeah. yeah. Um, 15 years is, probably yeah. been 15 year replacement yeah. at down. Yeah. It's way too long. Yeah. yeah. Some trucks are out in the worst environment in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it looked like a piece of Swiss cheese, but then 15 yeah. years, you can keep on it over 15 years. And yeah, the emissions laws, it's hard to sell out of the other trucks anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions for Ron? Uh, we, we also do have the building maintenance yeah, budget building here, if anyone had any questions about that. That one, I, it's, I just level funded it. Um, moved some numbers around for different accounts, but right. trying to get some, the building repairs, which I moved what I could out of the heating and um, mm -hmm. put it towards building repairs. We're definitely in a situation where we're going to have to start doing some repairs mm -hmm. to the building. So, so do you think the insulation work in this building will help? Um, I'll be able to tell in a little while with what our um, fuel bill's been here. Because you did lower the... Yeah, we, we, it was high in the first place. I mean, I... What I did, it's, I've only been doing, I've only had it for a year, so um, trying to put the numbers all together is spending. But we're keeping real good records of what we're spending everywhere. Great. And um, on heat and stuff like that. And, um, but there's definitely a lot of repairs that could be done. We had to do quite a bit over the other building already this year. Okay. Any other questions for Ron on, on building maintenance? Uh, just out of ignorance, what's the sheep barn? Uh, we oh, rent the sheep that. barn. <laughs> for storage. That's where we keep our sheep. I see. Did they help with the mowing? You didn't know we kept <laughs> sheep. You go buy it on the way to the grammar school. <laughs> okay. That, that one could go away once we get a new highway garage. <laughs> yes, we should call it the sheep barn. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Also have you uh, discussed this with the owner of the property for this next year, Ronald? Um, the last, I have it for the coming year. You may want to. I, know I have no idea where he stands, but I know. He, doesn't yeah. like to, he does not like to wait the last minute, so. Right. No, I know. In the last, you should, last you should time I talked to him, it wasn't, it's not an issue, but I do know that he's been talking to him some of the place, but. Yeah, I think we're supposed to contact him first of the year, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll talk to him. There's a, there, there's a quote unquote annual lease, is that how it works? Yes. Annual yes. lease. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Ron? Thank you, Ron. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Ron. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Doing a great job here on this uh, budget. Thank you. Okay. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, good night. Okay, so we're done with that section. Yeah. No, I don't have any items anticipated 48 hours in advance. I do not. Okay. Can we be excused from the dinner table? Just so what? Yeah. Can you be excused from the Sure, you're all done, man. If you guys want to stay and watch the rest of the meeting, it's fine. But uh, it's not going to be too exciting. Okay. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Are you kidding? My update? The update. Tom's update. You know well, what Tom, you might want to stay for Tom's update. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I, 48 hour items, huh? I, I don't have too much because uh, we only met on Tuesday and I was away on Friday. So but, uh, budget, we had asked maybe if uh, Lee Woodcombe can come in and explain that whole software upgrade to proposing. Oh, she will. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, she'll be that's in it. February 5th. I February think. 5th. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, committee news, the Energy Committee has unfortunately stopped making headway in negotiating with the Town Hall insulation contractor. They and I are preparing a counter proposal to his offer to reduce the final payment for the job, which was not completed according to contract. 
Well, if they have to do this according to contract, why aren't we getting back involved? Uh, well, we don't need to at this point. All we have to do is not pay him. Then if he sues the town, we'll get Jack involved. But I, I think that he will recognize that what we're, what we're considering not paying him and what he offered us not to pay him aren't that far apart. So I don't think we'll go to the court for the difference. Will this impact the Green Communities Grant? No, this is from the Green Communities yeah. Grant. Um, it will leave more money in, in it. What? But we haven't completed the work that we said we would do. Why does he not want to complete it? Certain work was completed. It's all sealed up, and everything is, uh, according to him, done. Uh, however, it was not done according to specification, uh, and therefore, um, we're not going to. We would not get the uh, energy savings we anticipated, and they didn't use as many as much material as uh, we were expecting them to use. Uh, so, and um, it's very long and very involved, and I'm happy to talk about it more at length, uh, but it would take a long time to say everything. I, I would love to get somebody else involved in this as well, if you're interested. But the, the bottom line is, he's saying, um, you know, you can cut $6,000 off what you owe me, and we're saying, how about sixteen? dollars right, we'll, um, we'll, we'll talk so about that more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's. Um, <laughs> Could we hire somebody else to complete it? Uh, we, all of these options have been discussed thoroughly. I'm sure. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, so for departmental news, uh, I also attended the annual conference with the Massachusetts Municipal Association this past weekend and learned two TWO items relevant to our budget. First, unrestricted general government aid will be rising 3.5%, good news. And second, our Maya cost increase, both workers' compensation and property and casualty, casualty will be up about 2.5%, depending on our particular claim history. We, we did have some claims this year, so we might be going up a little bit more than that, but that's that's generally, Maya go up, generally good news. Did Maya grow up after they heard that we were going to get a three point five percent increase? <laughs> uh, no, that was uh, that was in the cards. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Franklin Regional Retirement Board will be voting Wednesday, February twenty eighth, on a proposal for a cost of living adjustment of three percent. That's for uh, pensioners. Uh, the meeting is public, and member towns are invited. Our treasurer will be attending for the town. Please let me know if you'd like further details. Do, do we know the effect of that? Uh, do we have an idea? Uh, this is just the pension part of the um, of the retirees. It's not the health care part, so okay. it, it's not it, it it's not huge. It's it's within the range that they usually go up. The um, the regional up cost of living went up two percent. Um, but they are still going forward with a 3% proposal, and I imagine our treasurer will be hearing more about that on February 28th. Okay. Um, Conway has received a community compact grant under the Efficiency and Regionalization Program to, insist, to assist in our treasurer's software conversion. Um, along with several other towns. This was facilitated by our treasurer with Royalston as the lead town. Since the Community Software Consortium is also partially funding the conversion, we anticipate this will be able to be completed without using any town funds. That's a real good thing. I have a little bit of a question about the timing for that. I think the community compact money all has to be used the first year, uh, but I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not exactly sure of the details on that, which would mean that Community Software Consortium money would be used the second two years. It's a three-year uh, conversion. Uh, there will be an information night for those interested in Comcast service who would like to speak with company representatives. It will be February 6th 
2018 from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Uh, residents will be at the, uh, representatives will be at the town hall from 7 to 8.30 to answer questions, provide information about Comcast's services, or make an appointment for a construction estimate for those homes and businesses that Comcast has identified will require additional construction. Oh, are we going to get this out to all, all, the, all the members that have some questions? Well, and Tom put it in the visitor situation. It's in the, it's in the visitor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and can it go out to your uh, email list I as well? I can certainly send it out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, great. great. So you put an email list. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and That's the people who write me with ask questions, I have them. That's a list. good thing. Yeah. Uh, as we heard before. Um, We've received a preliminary budget for the Conway Grammar School, but does that does not include the new figures for Chapter 70 state assistance, which Governor Baker said were fairly rosy. Uh, we should delay any discussion until the business manager incorporates those numbers. I think you mentioned that yep. earlier. Yes. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you, Tom. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, concerns of the selectmen. Do we have any concerns? No. No concerns, okay. Mail, uh, okay, mail we received the, uh, we, and we get this every year from the Massachusetts Taxpayers Foundation and they give us a whole bunch of data uh, on all the towns in Massachusetts so we can compare uh, how we're doing against other towns. Very, very interesting uh, information. Uh, announcements, anybody have any announcements? No, okay, no announcements. Our next meeting is for Monday, uh, January 29th, 2018, here in the Town Hall. Uh, it's 6 p.m., and we're also going to have a joint meeting with the Finance Committee at 6.30 p.m. to discuss um, mostly, some other Mostly budgets. public safety. Mostly public safety, okay, great. Um, any, other for, any other business come before the board? Okay, I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Do I have a second? second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.